welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing a new style of word dye with our giant outlined Oh What Fun and also our giant outlined Merry and Bright. We're going to be going over these dyes and then creating four cards that show how to use these types of dyes in four different ways. It's super cool. So let's go ahead and check them out. First up, we're going to take a look at the giant Merry and Bright. And as you can see, it cuts this cool frame that you can layer on to your cards. And you'll see there we have all of the insides of the R's and the B. So we're going to lay those out to the side, and then we're just going to layer this onto a standard size card base. So this piece of peacock cardstock is five and a half by four and a quarter. And you can see that this giant outline word it gives you a nice little border all of the way around. So we added some tape runner to the back of that and layered it onto the card. And now we're just dropping in the little extra details for the R and the B. And you can see that it looks super cute just like that. But one of my favorite things about this die is that you can do some really cool paper piecing. So we went ahead and die cut that same die out of some craft cardstock. We're going to pop each letter out. We're adding a little bit of adhesive to the back and then you can drop those letters in kind of like a little puzzle piece, creating a really cool and bold look. And this is so much fun. We're going to be showing you some different ways to do it, but you could do it with different colors of cardstock, pattern paper, vellum, sparkle cardstock, anything in your imagination. The other thing that I really love about this die is that it looks great if you don't drop the different colors of letters in, and it looks great if you do. So there's so many cool design options. You can keep it more simple or keep it a little bit more complicated like we're doing here by dropping in each letter. And it is such a bright and bold look. I just love this so much. Doesn't it just make you smile? I mean, you could send the card just like this. It's just so pretty. Now we're going to take a look at the giant outlined Oh What Fun. And this has the same exact idea. It's going to cut this really cool frame and you're going to be able to layer it onto your card with a nice border. So this is a standard size piece and we're going to layer this on. It's going to give you a nice little border all of the way around. And then we're just going to drop in the detail for the O and the A in Oh What Fun. And as you can see, I mean, this looks so cute. I love the two colors, but we're going to do the same thing that we did with the Merry and Bright. So we're going to die cut the giant outline Oh What Fun from some craft card stock. And then we're going to add some adhesive to the back of these letters and we're going to drop them in kind of like a little puzzle piece. We're using some tape runner on the back of these letters. You could use liquid glue, or you could also use some double-sided adhesive sheets and you could die cut it and then it would kind of be like a sticker that you could just drop each of the letters in. And now here you can see how just adorable this is. I love how these turn out so much. And then here is a comparison between the Merry and Bright and the Oh What Fun. And so now we're gonna start creating some awesome cards with this. And first up, we're gonna be recreating a really cool design by Audrey that I just adore. And so we're going to take out a bunch of different colors of cardstock and do some die cutting. So there you can see we did that all off camera. We've got pinks and reds and greens and turquoises and of course this beautiful pixie dust, which is going to look absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to be cutting down a piece of black cardstock. You can see there that it's going to be three and three quarters and by five. And the reason we're cutting it down to this size is this is the exact size of the giant outlined Mary and Bright. So we're going to layer this piece right behind and it's just going to fill in the background of the giant Mary and Bright. So here you can see we're saving all of the little interiors of the letters and then we can go ahead and add some liquid glue to the back of this and then layer it onto the black cardstock. And I just love the look of the pixie dust cardstock on the black licorice cardstock. It's so beautiful. Now we're going to go back to all of those ones that we die cut out of different colors of cardstock. And this is some ballet slippers cardstock. And we're only going to be using two of the letters. Well, guess what that means? That means that we have all these other letters to create other cards with. And we'll be showing you this after we create this card. But save those letters because you'll be able to do this technique and create a bunch of different cards with cool rainbow letters. So we're going to be dropping in our ballet slippers first. And then we're going to move on to one of those other colors of cardstock cardstock. So this is some guava cardstock and we're going to pop out the letters that we need and we're going to save the other ones because it means that we're going to be able to create a lot more cards, which means you're not wasting any cardstock because you're able to use all of these letters. So we're going to drop in the R and then for the little outline in the center, we're going to use the pixie dust one. And you'll see when we drop that in, it kind of gives it that nice finished look. 
And now we can continue on with the rest of the process. So we're just kind of moving through our colors, creating this really fun, bright, rainbowy Christmas card. And there's something that's so bold about the sparkle, the bright colors of cardstock, and then the black licorice cardstock on the back. And it's just so gorgeous. I also love that Audrey had like two shades of pink, two shades of green, two shades of turquoise. It just looks really, really cute and fun. So we're gonna drop in our last tee here and you can see just how gorgeous this design is looking. Now here we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're gonna take some of the original Let It Shine paper because it has this really great red and white stripe on the back and it's just perfect for Christmas cards. So we're gonna layer that onto the card base. We'll add some foam squares to the back of our giant outlined Merry and Bright. And then we're gonna layer that onto the card. The finishing touch is to take some lawn trimmings. This is some red sparkle lawn trimmings. We're gonna take some of that and we're gonna tie it around the top in a cute little bow. And there's something about that sparkle that just kind of brings in the sparkle of the pixie dust cardstock and a little bow on the top. I feel like it's just perfect for Christmas. And now the card is all done. It's so super cute. It just makes me smile. It's just so happy. And guess what? We had all of those die cut letters still sitting there so we can make more cards. So we went ahead and die cut the giant outline Mary and Bright from the Pixie Dust cardstock again. We trimmed down some black licorice cardstock and adhered it to that. And then we started dropping in the extra letters that we had left over. And so we're gonna make another card and we could keep going and use up all of the letters creating a bunch of different cards and you'd have a bunch of Christmas cards ready to send out. So we're gonna drop in that last T there and then we're gonna repeat the same process. We're gonna add some foam squares on the back. We're gonna put that beautiful red and striped pattern paper onto a card base. We're gonna layer that on there. Of course, we're gonna tie a little bow at the top. And now we have a, another super cute card using the letters that we already die cut. It looks absolutely adorable. And here you can see the comparison between the two and they both just look so so cute. Now I love using these giant outline words just like this as a big and bold greeting on my cards. But the other cool thing about these dies is it's a really great place to add in and tuck in some adorable stamped images. And that's what we're gonna do with this next card. So we're gonna be using the giant outlined Oh What Fun and we're recreating a card by Megan that's just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Megan. And we're gonna die cut this out of both white cardstock and out of pixie dust cardstock. Now we're gonna set the pixie dust cardstock aside for now and we're just gonna work on the white. So we're going to pop out all of the pieces and the letters. We're not gonna need the letters because we're gonna be using the pixie dust for that later, but we are gonna save the inside of the O and the inside of the A. Then we're gonna trim down a piece of vellum and it's gonna be that five inches by three and three quarter inches so that it perfectly lines up behind the Oh What Fun. And this is such a cool look when you see how this ends up looking with some pattern paper. So we're gonna layer that piece of vellum right behind. And this piece of vellum is not only gonna diffuse our pattern paper, you'll see that in just a bit, but it's also gonna give us a place to glue down the interior part of our letters. And that's where we're gonna bring in the pixie dust cardstock. So the cool thing about this is, is once again, you can see how you could make this same exact card, but just flip the papers because you're gonna have a pixie dust frame and you're going to have white cardstock letters. So you can flip the whole design. So definitely when you die cut these, if you're using just the letters, save the frame. If you're using just the frame, save the letters and you can create more cards in the same design, which means you could get more of your holiday cards done in one sitting, which I just love. So you see here, we're just dropping in all of our letters and also the insides of the letters too. And we'll drop in the U and then the N. And then we're gonna start working on things to create a scene with this. So we're gonna take out a stitch till side border and we're gonna die cut a piece of white cardstock that's gonna end up layering behind this awesome Oh What Fun. It's gonna look really cool with that vellum over it. You'll see how it kind of diffuses it. Now to help that little snow bank pop a little bit, we're just gonna take a light blue green marker and we're just gonna layer right over top of the hill there. And you'll see when we layer it behind the the vellum now, it's just gonna have a little bit more of a pop, which is really pretty. Then we'll take our liquid glue and we're gonna carefully put liquid glue just along the frame and just the bottom parts of these letters because we don't want any of the glue to peek out from behind the vellum since the vellum is a bit translucent. And so we're gonna layer that hill bank right there and you'll see we'll flip this over and it's already looking so very cute. 
Now we're gonna take out the pattern paper we talked about earlier, and we're using some Knit Picky pattern paper as standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna layer it onto the card base, and then now this, I think, is what's just so magical. When you layer this on top, it kind of diffuses the pattern paper behind it, and it makes it almost even look like it might be a different pattern paper behind the vellum, but it's just the vellum just making it a little bit softer, which is just such a pretty look. So we're gonna add just a little bit of adhesive, we're hiding it behind the letters and the frame and those stars and then we can layer that onto the pattern paper creating that really cool diffused look. Next, we're gonna take out the Snowball Fight stamp set. And these mice are so cute and they are just perfect for both the giant Oh What Fun and the giant Merry and Bright. But the Oh What Fun with these little guys is just adorable because they are having a snowball fight, which is so much fun. So we're gonna layer these guys into the scene at the bottom where we added the snow bank, but also on top of the letters as well because there's these kind of little ridges like at the top of the T, which is a great place for the characters to be able to hang out. So we're gonna add a little snowball fight, a little melted snowball, at the top. We'll add one more at the top of the end there. And just look how cute and fun this is. I love that you can use them as a bowl greeting, but you can also integrate your really cute and adorable stamped images as well. Now next up, Shari is gonna blow you away. She's gonna show you how to create a shaker card with the giant Mary and Bright, and then she's gonna take the Oh What Fun and she's gonna turn it into a birthday card, and it's so super cute. So take it away, Shari. Today I am using the new Giant Outline Mary and Bright die to make a shaker card. I'm going to start out by putting a piece of the double-sided adhesive sheet onto a piece of white cardstock. And this is going to be the piece that I cut this large sentiment die from. And then I'll have adhesive all over the back, which will make it very easy to adhere to the acetate to make a shaker card. So I've cut my piece of white cardstock from that piece that has the acetate on the back. And I'm pulling out these inside pieces and just setting them aside kind of in the order where they go because I'm going to need those interior pieces of the R's and the B to put onto my acetate when I get to that point. I haven't popped out the letters. Um, you could, but actually when I pulled the backer off, they all came off anyway. I'm going to be layering this over some Knit Picky Winter Paper. I've actually cut this a little bit larger than a standard A2 size card. This is six inches by four and three quarters. So I basically added a half inch to each measurement so that I get a really nice big border around this die. So I've just added that to a card base cut to those same dimensions. I have my acetate piece. I have not cut this down. I felt like it would be easier to just trim it once I have the sentiment attached to it. So you can see that it is bigger than my sentiment. I'm going to pull off that liner paper of that double-sided adhesive sheet and you'll see all those interior letters come with it. So actually I didn't need to worry about popping those out at all. And now I can adhere this to that piece of acetate. I'll just trim off the extra acetate here in a little bit. I find that this kind of adhesive sticks the best to acetate a dry adhesive like this. So it's nice to have this adhesive sheet all over the back. Now I need to fill in the interior parts of the R's and the B. So I'm just using the letter itself as a guide and then I can drop in that interior outline for each one. This is why I set them aside in the order of where they should be. And I'm just using some extra letters that were cut from some white cardstock. This is obviously not the ones that I pulled off with the adhesive sheet. And I'm just using these as a guide to help me just drop these pieces in where they should be. Now the pieces I am sticking down, of course, did come from that die cut with the adhesive sheet. So I can just pull off that backer paper and they'll easily stick down. So now that I have all of those pieces glued to my acetate, I'm just going to take a long pair of scissors and trim off the excess acetate on the outside of the frame. So I'm just trimming right along that piece of paper, right along the frame, and then my acetate is cut to the perfect size. Now to fill in the letters, I 
pulled some more colors from that nitpicky winter paper pack. I've cut the letters for the word bright from that teal color and then I'll cut the letters for the word merry from the green. And for these, I did not put the double-sided adhesive on the back, so I'm just going to use a little tape runner. And here's a little trick I discovered. That piece of paper that you see me laying my letters down on and then adding the adhesive, that's actually the backer paper that I pulled off when I added that very large piece at the beginning. And it's perfect for this this activity because the adhesive that goes off the letter doesn't stick to it like it sticks to just a piece of regular paper. So it actually stays nice and clean and nothing sticks to your letter. That was just kind of a happy accident that I thought I would share. So now I'm going to cut out the letters for the word Mary and I'll do the same thing. These actually kind of stayed in the die a little bit so I could kind of add it to them there. But when they popped out again, I just laid it on that piece of backer paper that I pulled off and the adhesive doesn't stick to it and it stays nice and clean and you don't end up getting any adhesive on the front of your letters that might be on the paper. Now, as I said at the beginning, I'm making a shaker card. So I need to add some foam to bring this piece up and I have room behind it for my shaker pieces to move around. So I have pulled out my 3D foam strips and these are nice and thin and they are actually the perfect thickness to fit behind the frame of this die. So I'm just going to make sure that I go around all four sides with these thin foam strips. Just trim off the excess when I get to the end. And then I will have the foam all the way around. You could add some internally, but I like the idea of all these shaker pieces moving in this very large space behind the sentiment. So I've got my foam all the way around and then I'm going to add my shaker pieces. So I have these really tiny, tiny stars. I'm not sure where they came from. I've pulled out the ones in silver. It's almost like beads. You could use beads, they're almost the same size. And then I also have these iridescent ones, which you don't see quite as much as the silver on that pattern paper. And then I also have some larger silver stars that I'm going to add. Now these I just got at the craft store in like a sequin pack that had all colors of sequins and then it had all kinds of colors of the stars as well. So I've just put all those in the center of my card. And then I'll pull off the liner paper from the back of all those foam strips that I added to the frame. And then I can just line this up centered in my card base panel. Make sure that all those foam strips on all four sides are stuck down really well so that all those shaker pieces inside are trapped in there. And look how fun this is. I like that those kind of Iridescent ones, they may not be able to be seen, but I feel like they are catching the light in a different way than the silver stars. And I really like the idea of this almost being like a full panel shaker card, but it's all trapped behind that sentiment. And then finally, I'm using my sparkle glaze to fill in those little sparkle shapes. You could put pattern paper in here, but I thought that this would be a fun way to fill them in as well. And then here is my finished card. I think this is really fun and just a really striking card to have this full front shaker and that really big sentiment. And it came together pretty quickly. It's a great way to showcase some pattern paper as well. So I thought it would be fun to take the Oh What Fun die and make a birthday card. I've cut this out of some pixie dust glitter cardstock. I haven't popped all the letters out just yet. I'm making sure that I keep that inner part of my O close by. And I'm going to be layering this over some really rainbow paper. I'm going to use that one with the really bold big stripes. I thought that this would be really fun with that white die cut layered over top. Now, I wish I had put some double-sided adhesive on this, but I did not. So we're going to be using glue for this card. And I'm going to add some vellum behind the letters. I thought that would be a really fun look to where you could still see the colors of the paper, but you got that kind of ghosty look of the vellum. 
Now you could die cut this, but we all know that sometimes it's hard to glue vellum down without seeing the adhesive. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my die cut and using it as a guide. I'm tracing the outline of the letters and those little portions on the inside. And this will show me where to cut. And I'm just gonna fussy cut this out with my scissors. Now I do need to make sure that I mark the inside of the O. So I'm gonna grab my O and pop that in and then the frame as well, and then trace the inside of the O. So now I have a pencil line to go by. And this is rough, and our cutting can be rough as well because it's going to be hidden behind that really nicely cut die cut. So ideally you want to cut sort of on the inside of your pencil line so that this is slightly smaller than the die cut. It's really easy to cut out because most of the lines are actually just straight lines. So you can see I'm just snipping into my vellum and like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty. So if my corners overlap, it doesn't matter because all of this is going to get hidden behind that die cut. So I've just put this in super speed so you can see how quickly this sort of went. But I wanted you to see that it did not really take me that long to cut all these out with all those straight cuts. Now for those interior pieces, actually you could leave them if you wanted that look but I wanted to cut them out to where the vellum is only in the letters and I'm using my craft knife to do this if you don't feel comfortable using a craft knife you can use your scissors as well my craft knife actually needs a new blade so it wasn't cutting that great you can see I'm going to break out my scissors a little bit as well when I cut the center of the O I'll show you how I did it with scissors the craft knife does work really well for these little triangular pieces between some of the letters. So for the O, I just cut a slit with my craft knife. That gives me a place to get my scissors in there. And then I can just use my scissors to cut out the inside of the O. So that's another option on a way to cut this out. So now I have my really roughly cut piece of vellum. I'm going to go ahead and pop out all the letters left in that sparkle cardstock die cut piece. And then I'm going to layer this vellum behind it. Now, as I said before, I did forget to put a double-sided adhesive sheet on this when I cut it out, but I don't want to waste my glitter cardstock. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue, go around the outline, and just lay that on top of the vellum. And you can see how fun that is to have that ghost kind of light white vellum letter in the middle. Now I'm just using the die cut negative piece of the O so that I can line up the inside of the O. And I did have a few places where the vellum wasn't cut great and I just used my scissors to trim those out like the O right here. I had it cut a little too big and it stuck out past that outline. But it was really easy to clean that up with my scissors. I don't want to forget the inside of my A so I'm just going to pop that A in and do that little triangular piece in the middle. Now I thought it would be fun to kind of lift the vellum up off the surface of the pattern paper a little bit so that it's even more kind of white and ghosty looking. So I cut two more of the Owat Fun dies from just white cardstock and I'm using some glue just to layer these together and stack them so I get that thick die cut. Then I'm going to layer this behind the piece with the glitter and basically sandwich that vellum between the glitter layer and these stacked die cuts behind it. So that will kind of lift it up a little bit and make the color not so bold behind the vellum pieces. It also gives some really nice dimension to this die cut as well. So now that I have this all done, I just lay the block on there to give it a second to dry nice and flat. I'm going to trim my bold rainbow piece down and put that on my card base and then now I can add this die cut that I spent this time on to my card base and you're gonna see how that pattern paper shows through the vellum a little bit but it's still different than the really bright pattern paper outside of the letters I just think that's a really cool look now I'm making a birthday card, so I'm breaking out my party balloons dies. I'm using these two small ones and the strings. I also pulled out the stitched cupcake die set because there is a little party hat in there. So there's a solid party hat and then the stripes that you layer over top. And I picked out my colors and went ahead and die cut all my pieces. I'm using two colors for each party hat. 
and then I have three balloons that I'll put towards the top. So I'm just going ahead and layering my party hats together so they're ready to go and add to the card. The strings I cut from Narwhal cardstock, and before I did this, I did kind of plan out where I wanted these things to go. So I'm using those sparkly shapes up at the top around the word O as my guide where my balloons are gonna go. I thought this was a great way to kind of change it up, but not cover up more of that beautiful cardstock in the background. For this swirly one, I wanted it to wrap around that dot of that exclamation point. I thought that was really fun. And it's a little longer than I needed, so I'm just gonna trim that off. And I picked cool colors to go towards the top where I knew there would be warm color stripes behind. And then I picked some warm colors to go on the bottom where I knew there would be cool colors. That way I was sure to have the contrast that I wanted between my elements and my pattern paper. I gave that little O hat up there at the top. I'm adding this one to the bottom. I'm not covering up all those sparkles. In this last hat, I'm using that little sparkle shape at the bottom as a good place to anchor it. And I'm just making sure that I'm turning it back and forth, making sure I like the, the tilt of it compared to the other ones. And then this is my finished birthday card using the Oh What Fun die. I just think this is a really fun idea to kind of layer that vellum behind, kind of step it up a notch, and change it up from Christmas and use it for other occasions as well. Oh my goodness, Shari, this card could not be cuter. And I love that you took a die that was meant for the holidays and you turned it into a birthday card. It's so much fun. And this shaker idea is just adorable. And I love the mixes of pattern paper. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this card by Mindy is so much fun. I love the rainbow letters on the white background. It's beautiful. Elise also created some shaker cards with both the Merry and Bright and Oh What Fun, and they look so super cute, especially with that nitpicky paper in the background and those awesome gold metallic letters. This card by Callie is so cute. I love the rainbow stripes that she has in the background and how she added the Let It Shine Starry Skies paper. And then here Grace added some beautiful pattern paper into her letters and then she took some awesome Christmas die cuts and layered them into the letters and I just love the look. This is the card by Megan that inspired us to make ours today. It's so cute and such a fun way to put your stamps into these giant words. And this card by Callie is so much fun as well. I love that she added some rainbow stripes behind the merry and bright too. Here, Maureen got super creative and she took the letters out and used them on their own. And what fun is this? I can't wait to try it too. I love how Kara took our tiny winter friends and put them into the letters peeking out from the B and the R. It's so cute and sweet and just makes me smile. And here I love how Letitia used some beautiful bright pastels with a silver cardstock frame that is just beautiful. And then here I love how Tammy used our snow one like you sledding critters in the place of the U of Oh What Fun. It's just so adorable. I love how Elena used gold and white together with a little bit of that blue stripe peeking out. It's so cute and sweet and I can't wait to try this color combo myself. And then Lynette mixed and matched all of the nitpicky papers in such a cute card. This card is just so cozy and I love it. So we cannot wait to see how you guys use these new giant outline dies. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.